everyone, my name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jen and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the start of my very first haul of 2023. This one is not as big as a few of my other hauls have been on this channel, but there still are a fair number of books, so we're gonna get through it. We're gonna start going through. Let's just dive in. <laughs> so first and foremost, the very first book that I bought this year was Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson, which is the third book in the Stormlight Archives, which I have since read and really enjoyed. I love this series so far and I cannot believe how easy these books are to read <laughs> considering this one is like 1200 pages long and it's like epic 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 sci-fi. I think I've come across a little bit of a phenomenon in my reading that like as I was reading this one I was listening to the audiobook at like 3.0 speed, which I know is ridiculous. But when I first picked up the first book of this series, which is The Way of Kings, I was reading that one at 1.5 speed because I couldn't understand what was happening and I needed to really grasp my mind around it. But now that I've been in the fantasy world for so long, I am in it. I get it. I am devouring these books like nothing and it's just so enjoyable to be in this world. This one is my least favorite of the Stormlight so far. I only gave it four stars versus the two previous which had five stars, but I'm so excited for Rhythm of War when I get my hands on it and when I get around to it, but yes. Oathbringer. Next up, my lovely friend Sophia actually gifted me these for Christmas, but I got them in January as she gifted me A Merry Little Meet Cute by Julia Nope, Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone, which is a steamy, cute little rom-com set at Christmas. So I haven't actually read this yet, and I think I'm gonna keep it until December, but I'm very excited about it because this went a little bit just like around the group chat <laughs> as we were as we were in the Christmas season. A bunch of my friends read it and really, really liked it. So I'm excited to get to this and whenever that happens, probably in December. So very little me cute. And she also picked me up Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen, which is a YA fantasy that I've had my eyes on for a little while since it came out, I do believe. So Skin of the Sea is a YA fantasy that deals with mommy watas or mermaids. And Natasha Bowen is a scholar, but her, and has like an English degree and stuff, but her passion was for mermaids and African history, which is what this is based on. So I'm very excited to get to this when I do. And also this cover is stunning. Next up, I picked up A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I've been seeing this on the internet as a another name or another book title that's kind of been floating in the cozy fantasy genre a little bit, or maybe like cozy fantasy adjacent. And people have just been loving this duology, which is this, this one. And I believe her newest one like just came out, Rebecca Ross, but I'm not sure what to expect in it. Huh, this one's also a like water-based one. Interesting. <laughs> it's got these two people who kind of go on an adventure across dark, dark waters. It has like elemental spirits in it. Cool, I love it, I love it. And I can't wait to read it because I've heard wonderful things about it. Then we have two more here that I have since read and they are Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert and Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. These are two books that I picked up at Indigo when I was with my lovely friend Yelani. We went on a little bookstore date. These are two of the books that I picked up, or these are the two books that I picked up. Yep, yeah. <laughs> I said that very funny. But yes, this here, Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute, is a cute little YA rom-com, enemies to lovers vibe, where our two characters kind of go on this like nature retreat kind of a thing. I enjoyed it enough. I gave it three and a half stars when I read it. Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman is kind of a dark urban fantasy parallel universe, but like in the line, in the in the vein of like The Unsleeping City by Dementia 20. And like, I want to say like the Schwab's A Darker Shade of Magic where you have like parallel Londons, but they're like on top of each other. I like this one a whole lot. I gave this four stars and highly, highly suggest both of those if they at all, if they intrigue you yeah, at all. <laughs> then I picked up three books. I picked up the sequel to Leviathan Wakes, which I had read in February for My Friends Pick My TBR, which is Caliban's War or Caliban's War. I'm not sure how to say that name properly, which is very exciting. Book two in the Expanse series. This is, well, so far book one was a like murder mystery in space kind of vibe with really interesting characters and a, a really space operatic, huge narrative. So I'm really excited to continue this epic series. It's like nine books long, but I've heard that this one is also very good. So got this one in that same trip. I also picked up book two and three of my 
favorite trilogy of all time now, which is the Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. I picked up the Obelisk Gate and the Stone Sky, and then I proceeded to read both of them. <laughs> and both of them are five stars. This series is fantastic, and I specifically went to the bookstore so I could get the Obelisk Gate after I had finished reading the fifth season, or rereading the fifth season, because I did that in February. And I picked this one up and I knew when I was at the bookstore, I was like, I know the way that I just devoured the fifth season. I'm gonna need the third book on hand. And I really did because I read it right away. So love these books so, so, so much. Some of my favorites and we'll read them, reread them forever. But the fifth season as a whole is a like end of the world apocalyptic scenario, but with like magic and the earth is mad. It's great. <laughs> then I was sent a lovely arc from HCC Frenzy because I won one of their giveaways on TikTok, which was for The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Rashani Chakshi, which is a gothic fairy tale adult fantasy book, I think. I think that's how I can describe it. I know it has like marriage and myth at the center of it. So I'm very intrigued by this and I'm very interested to get into it and start reading it. But yeah, a lovely arc from HCC Frenzy that I am hopefully going to read very soon. Then I made an order on Book Outlet because how could I not? Because they had a lot of good sales and I got these five books. So first and foremost, I picked up the Mighty Nine Origins Caleb Widogast graphic novel, which is a very teeny tiny graphic novel that I, you know, I love Critical Role's graphic novels. They're so great, but a lot of these origin ones are so tiny and I really can't justify buying them, especially when a hardcover graphic novel with this few pages is the same price as a young adult hardcover novel, right? Like it's just, like I understand why, but I can't justify it when I'm done this story in 10 minutes, you know? I I read this standing in my standing in the middle of my condo for like 10 minutes and it gets a three star because there's not really even a story there, but I'm glad that I picked it up from Book Outlet because I got it for like $13, which is much better <laughs> than spending full price on it. But yeah, this was a very interesting graphic novel to experience as a fan of The Mighty Nine, as a fan of Critical Role, a super fan, you guys know. Caleb's backstory is absolutely heartbreaking and this is just another level of seeing it visually instead of just being told it through the campaign. So this was something, this was definitely something. But yeah, I only gave this three stars. When I read it, the other ones here, the only one that I have actually read is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I picked up this paperback version because I've been on a hunt for these beautiful hardcover copies with the with these covers on them of Becky Chambers books but for some reason book one and book two just don't exist in these kind of hardback covers with this dust jacket on it. So I have book three and book four in those hardcovers and then I saw this one on there and previously I saw actually I have another book outlet order that's currently living with my friend because she made the order and I got three books in that order and one of them is the second book in a paperback style in this cover. So I now have the entire Wayfarers series and I'm very happy that I do because this is one of my favorite sci-fi series ever. I cannot wait to reread them now that I have them in physical copies and annotate them and just love them so much. But yeah, some of my favorite, favorite sci-fi, but yes, Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. And then the three that I have not read that I picked up in that sale, I picked up Daughter of Red Winter by Ed McDonald, which is a fantasy book that I know absolutely nothing about other than the fact that this has necromancy in it, I think, not sure. Then I also picked up this cute little tiny novel. I want, I almost want to call it a novella, but it's a little bit thick for a novella, but it's The City Inside by Samit Basu. And this is a sci-fi one that apparently is really funny. So I'm into it and this cover is really cool. And then I picked up this behemoth, which is the first binding by R.R. Verdi. This is an epic fantasy that I've heard mixed reviews about, but I've been intrigued to pick up because I feel like I'm going to love it. It just, it taught like the, the blurb here doesn't even give me like a blurb of the story. It It's the like main character talking to you on this flap here. It says like, all legends are born of truths and just as much lies. These are mine, judge me for what you will, but you will hear my story first. And so I just, yeah, I just I had to when I saw it for only $8, especially because in Canada, these hardcovers go upwards of $40. So I had to, but yes, that was the order. <laughs> So love that. Then I picked up a couple indie pubbed books. I picked up the sequel to Cancel Treason Without Tea, which is A Pirate's Life for Tea by Rebecca Thorne. So the first one is this lovely sapphic cozy fantasy here. I didn't love this. It didn't quite work for me, but I think that the second one will work better for me. And because I love Rebecca Thorne and I love her content on TikTok, I was like, I have to, I gotta get it when it released early this February. So I'm excited to kind of see where she takes those two characters 
in here and we'll see how it shapes up to be but yes pick that one up and I also picked up Guardians of the Six Gate by Amy Procopis which is a lovely friend of, of mine on here I finally picked up her book that she's been talking about and she has the sequel coming out May 30th so this is a young adult fantasy romance that I believe is like urban fantasy I've heard her talk about it so much but my brain just doesn't retain information I'm very excited I actually talked to her last night for the next episode of the shared shelf and she said that it's like loosely inspired by Greek mythology and just has a lot of like my buzzwords so when I'm feeling YA again I will be picking this up <laughs> because y'all know I'm a little bit off of YA at the moment but that doesn't mean that I won't enjoy it when I do get to it. Yesterday actually I went to the bookstore and picked up two books. One of them doesn't really count as a book but I'm gonna talk about it anyways because I love it. The other one is The Encyclopedia of Fairies by Emily Wilde. Now this has been no, I'm very wrong. I've always thought that Emily Wilde was the author. I'm so wrong. The author is Heather Fawcett. Wow, okay, so it's Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. I'm very sorry. But yes, I had a coupon from Indigo due to their craziness that happened with their like shutting down for a month essentially and all their pre-orders being stuck. They gave me a coupon so I went and I got like 30% off of a whole bunch of stuff with my plum points and stuff. So I got this <laughs> because I've been eyeing it and seeing a lot of people react to it and read it and I don't really know what to expect but I'm very excited to dive in anyways. I've heard it's cozy, I've heard it's journalistic which I love, it's got fairies, it's got fantasy so I love it and I'm excited to get to it. Uh, but the other thing I picked up was the Emotion Thesaurus which if you guys saw my most recent episode of The Shared Shelf with Sarah Sutton. She talks about how this particular book is like a godsend for her. And as soon as she was talking about it, I'm like, I need to get my hands on that. And I quickly forgot about it. <laughs> and then I was re-watching the episode as I was putting it up on YouTube because I like to watch my videos all the way through to make sure they're all good and like there's nothing wrong with the footage. I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I need to go get this. So that's why I went out last night and picked it up from the store because I saw it was actually in store at my closest Indigo here. So I picked it up and I've already flipped through and tagged a few of the emotions and I just think this is a wonderful book because last night I was also editing a second story and I came across a sentence that I had written where I basically told the reader of a of an emotion and I was like I'm gonna try the emotion of thesaurus just to see and it was immediately just like so much better I could already tell is going to be an essential piece of my writing like book stuff that I need. I've, like as I was flipping through this I was getting ideas for stories that are up, up and coming. Not necessarily Aramount book two or three but like Sage's story that's going to be coming later on. Getting ideas for that. And I also tagged just a few of the emotions that I usually find that I write in my stories. Like obviously the main one, happiness. Gotta tag that so I can easy access it but Yes, I picked this up as well. <gasps> but yeah, so those are all the books that I've bought on my own. But let's talk about the pre-orders that have come in since the beginning of January. So this should be a lot taller. But as I just explained with the Indigo like cybersecurity breach and the reason why I had a coupon is because like three of my pre-orders have been caught in limbo. <laughs> so there should be three more. Two of them are currently on their way and one is still in limbo. I don't know where it is, but we'll talk about these anyways. So first and foremost, we got Hellbent at the beginning of the year by Lee Bardugo, which I still have not yet read. And yes, I got the red edition with the sticker that will not come off. <laughs> I tried. So it's a little bit damaged at the top, but it's just gonna have to stay on because it, it rips away the hardcover red. I'm mad that I got the red one, but I probably picked it up because it was the cheaper of the two versions when I when I originally got it, but I'm not mad about these end pages, to be honest. But yes, Hellbent by Lee Bardugo is the sequel to Ninth House, which or long-awaited sequel, I should say. I'm excited to dive in when I'm in the mood for some dark academia. I feel like I'm going to have to reread Ninth House though, because it has been a while since I've read that one. So I'll probably do like a Ninth House and then Hellbent kind of read through to get my whole experience of it, which I love doing. You guys know I'm a big purveyor of rereading books and getting that whole experience over again. Rereading books is just the best. So Ninth House and Hellbent are about Alex Stern, who is a student at Yale, I don't know. Yes, at Yale, who gets embroiled in the secret societies and she can see ghosts and she gets embroiled in some magic. Next up, I got my pre-order for Spice Road by Maya Ibrahim, which I have not yet read, but I somehow ordered the wrong edition and I got the fun like library binding where it just has 
no dust jacket, but the image is printed right on the book, which I'm super in love with. I don't really know much about it. And because it doesn't really have a blurb on the back, I don't know. But like the big, the big words on the middle here, they say, we will fight, but first we will have tea. So I love it. <laughs> so I'm very into that. Then I also got my pre-order for Barrow of Winter by H.M. Long, which I have since read and really enjoyed. This is probably my least favorite of H.M. Long's works. I gave it four stars and the other two that I've red. I only have one on my shelves here. It's Hollow Smoke, which is my favorite of hers. I gave five stars. So this one is good and I really did enjoy it. It is a wintry set kind of epic fantasy novel. H.M. Long can do no wrong when it comes to her descriptions. She's amazing. These books feel like reading like Skyrim. It's so fun and so good. I, yeah, I just love her work. So at this one. This is book three in the companion series, which you don't necessarily need to read them in all in order, but you should because they're fantastic. And if you read Temple before you read Hall of Smoke, you will be spoiled for Hall of Smoke. But if you read Barrow before you read either of the previous ones, I don't know if you'll be spoiled as much because this follows a different character than the previous one does. But you will know more of the characters that are mentioned in here if you've read the previous two. So that is my suggestion. Just read them in publication order because they're all amazing. They're so good. Love Hall of Smoke so, so, so much. So, it's like one of my favorite fantasy books of all time. And then finally, I also got my pre-order for <laughs> Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare, which I have yet to read, which, but again, off of YA at the moment. This is the third and final book to the Last Hours trilogy, which is the Chain of Gold, Chain of Iron, that whole thing, which is one of my favorite trilogies that she's done. Really enjoyed the second one when I read it. So when I read this behemoth, I will love it too, because there's something in Cassandra Clare's writing that just feels like crack. And I don't know what she puts in her writing, but it's great. And I enjoy it every time. <laughs> yes, my friends, the pre-orders that I am currently missing are A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon, which is the prequel to Priory of the Orange Tree. I'm missing Arca by G.R. McAllister, which is the sequel to Scorpica, which I'm very excited about. And I'm missing The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi, which is the pirate fantasy story that I see everyone on the internet just loving right now by the author who wrote the City of Brass series, S.A. Chakraborty. So hopefully those will come in before another one of my pre-orders gets stuck in Indigo Limbo right now. Anyways, my friends, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned today or if I've influenced you to buy them. Or if you just want to say hi, just leave me a little book stack emoji or a little wave and I will love you forever because I love you guys when you do that. But yes, as you guys know, or if you don't know, my book, A Second Story is coming out May 11th, which is less than two months away. Please add it on Goodreads and on Storygraph. The links are in my description. I will have pre-order info for you guys and a cover reveal very soon. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> And I'll let y'all in on a little secret if you've made it to the end of this video. If you guys want to be an ARC reader for a second story, definitely sign up for my newsletter, which is through my website down below. It's the pop-up that comes up. I will be having a ARC form go out in those newsletters at the beginning of April. So if you want in on that team, jump on it. <laughs> but yes, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And I will catch you in another video very soon. Stay kind and keep on reading.